Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Tandem Talk Show. I'm your host, Coach G, and I am very excited for this evening's episode. We have a very special guest that I cannot wait to introduce to you uh, this evening. And I know that if you are a woman who is struggling with losing body fat or curious how to stop stress eating, that this is an episode that you cannot miss. Hey, if you're new here to the Tiana Talk Show, this podcast is specifically geared towards teaching women exactly how to lose body fat in a healthy and sustainable way and to keep it off for life as well. If you're listening to this somewhere outside of our Facebook group, you're more than welcome to join us. You can um, ask to join our Facebook Facebook group at www.tandemnutrition.com forward slash Facebook to get into access of live videos just like this and a whole lot more. So I'm super excited to have on our past and current Tone Up VIP client, Shalom Barilli. <laughs> I, I even practice it, Shalom. I can pronounce your last name again. Barilli. It's okay. It's really hard. It really is. Man, I, it, I should have wrote it down at least five times. It's a hard How's your, <laughs> How's your day going so far today, Shalom? It's going well. I am already um, winding my day up. So my day is going really well. Um, I'm just relaxing, watching TV with my dog. So I really can't complain, honestly. So, so is that your trick to getting up at like four o'clock every morning to work out every single day going early? Um, no, I mean, um, I do have a set routine. I did, I, that's something I did establish during my first, um, go around with tandem. I, it, it varies because obviously my schedule varies. Like if, if you don't know me or you haven't met me before in the Facebook group, I am um, a nurse practitioner in urgent care and an ER nurse part-time in Florida. So I am busy um, and my schedule changes. So the days that I'm not working, you know, may look a little different, but um, definitely I do set aside plenty of time for rest either way. So this is one of those nights where, yes, I had an early start, so I'm having an early end. Fantastic. And I always left really inspired when I watch you uh, or see your stories on Instagram that you're so consistent working out all the time. And guys, if you're watching this right now, you don't follow her, please do so. She has some awesome workout videos she always posts. But we have an awesome topic that, um, you know, I, I, I really reached out to you about because you have conquered some big things throughout your journey of being a tandem nutrition client, specifically about how to stop stress eating and how to control your cravings. And um, maybe just give us some background first, Shalom, if you don't mind. Um, what, what, was, what was things like for you before you joined the team here at Tanda Nutrition? Sure. So um, I am somebody who um, has always associated food with emotions Um a uh, single parent household. So um, a lot of times food was um, very much like an emotional connection for me and um, like a comfort, a source of comfort for me. So that obviously like instilled some habits like extremely early on. Um, I'm talking like, I, I remember being in like the fifth and sixth grade and struggling with binging. So I know that um, for me, it was a lifelong issue. Like this was not something that I had like developed or anything like that. It was something that I'd battled my whole life. My family knew I'd battled it my whole life. The people that are close to me know it's something that I battled with. So before I would say that it, it pretty much ruled like everything. Um, it to the point where it became like subconscious. Um, mm it would rule what kind of day you were having. You know, if you were having a good day, it might be a little bit easier to control that. And thus then you would, you would feel better about yourself that day versus like if something bad happened, you would stress eat or you would go seek comfort in food and then you would end up binging and that would perpetuate a cycle of feeling even worse about yourself while you're having a bad day. Um, and of course, 
like a lot of like women who stress eat, my self-worth got really tied into the scale and how I, I would look at the number on the scale as a direct indication of my performance as a human. So it would become, you know, it was, it was very intense connection um, between stress eating and management of my, my daily life before for sure. Wow. Yeah. I can definitely see how that would be <clears throat> very like almost overtaking of your mindset and how that emphasized how you felt throughout the day. And, and, and yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that you, you battled that for so long. And as I mentioned before, Cole, like I remember some certain things you said that uh, really brought emotion out of me. Like, Hey, this is something that I think a lot of women may face. And, and um, for those who maybe listen to this, that, you know, maybe in, in the shoes that you were once in, you know, what advice would you, would you give to them if they're facing, you know, eating out of stress or emotion, or they're letting their feelings be dictated by what they see on the scale? Yeah. So definitely, I think in retrospect, like looking back, if I had to give some advice to another woman that's facing that. And, and I know a lot of, I, I want to like make it really um, clear first that that is not a you thing. Like if that's something that you're going through, it is not just a you thing. Like there's so many women in my life that can identify with this story and that we've talked about this before and they also struggle with this. I mean, I cannot tell you how many women I've come across. Not, I mean, not only in my journey in tandem, but like outside of tandem when I was done, um, so many women struggle with this. So if that is you, the first thing that you need to know is that you are absolutely not alone there. Um, and if you're not alone, then you are not the only one fighting it either. So um, it's, that's, I think that's the first thing I would think that's really important to get out of the, you know, to get on the table is that that's not just, just you, like you are not the only person struggling with that. And so there is help out there. But the thing is, for me personally, I can't speak for everyone. I know that for me, it was something that I battled on and off my entire life, but I was not really ready to like share that struggle or even admit that struggle for a long time. So I would do it alone. I would try to do it on my own. And for me, like last year, kind of coming to the conclusion that I absolutely couldn't do it alone, that I needed help to overcome that. And I needed help to figure out how to navigate through that. And so for me, if I were giving advice to somebody who was struggling with that, like if your, if your story sounds somewhat like that and somewhat like mine, it may be a good time to consider um, not doing it alone and um, adding help. So. Wow. That is, that is so powerful. And I, I, I really like, I mean, I can imagine that, you know, women listen to this and, Hey, that's, that's me too. Or like, Hey, I can't believe that like other people, like many people feel like that. Mm -hmm. And how you just were so, so relatable and, Hey, listen, you're not alone. Um, and even guys too, I have felt yeah. like this too in my past. I am not invincible of these feelings. And yeah. like I told you, um, you know, I talked to a lot of different people on, on calls, you know, talking about their interests in our programs. And like I said before, Cole, like your call stuck out to me. And the reason why I did is I had, it had such a big emotional impact on me just because I had felt just like you did on that call. Like specifically, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but you know, you'd mentioned that you're in a, in a place where like you would step on the scale in the mornings and like that would literally dictate whether you had a great day or a bad day. Yeah. And, and I just remember like, like I still remember that moment in my memory because I was the same way, especially in late high school when I was, you know, fighting my, my eating struggles myself. Yeah. Wow. I really want to, you know, and coach Layla is great too, by the way, for those listening, um, coach Layla was, uh, Shalom's initial coach here at Tandem Nutrition. Yeah. And she did an amazing job coaching Shalom to a huge amount of success, uh, not only physically, but also um, with her mindset as well. And that's actually one thing I want to touch on, because I think that's one part of the coaching process that many will overlook. And I love to hear your thoughts or like what you experienced personally in, in your program with Coach Layla. And that allowed you to get a different mindset that helped you change from this. Yes. Okay. So, um, that's a great question. I'm really glad you asked me that because I definitely wanted to touch on that. Um, I remember that phone call too. And I 
going like even going back to my mind in that phone call I remember that day perfectly because I had been busting it like I had been trying so hard on my own I'd been going to the gym consistently I'd been trying to eat right as I'd call it like you know I didn't I didn't have the knowledge at the time I didn't possess the skills at the time but it was not for a lack of trying and getting on that scale and seeing the numbers go up and up was the most defeating feeling and I still I mean it wasn't that long ago that I remember not to say that like I haven't gotten on the scale in a year and it's never gone up that's not what I mean I mean getting on the scale and it having the power to wreck your entire day and ruin any plans you had or any mood or any intentions you'd set for that day I remember being there and not possessing the still skills to get past that so um when I started working with Layla, she had quite a job on her hands because that was, I mean, just decades of thought processes that we had to weed through. And that was one of the most underrated things about Tandem. That was one of the most, um, you know, we talk about like on the Facebook, you guys talk about a lot of the great benefits to Tandem, fat loss, knowledge gain, all that stuff. But that's something that I've talked to other people that have completed tandem that it isn't talked about that much, but it's there. It really is. It's very tangible for most of the people that complete this program is the mind um, and the thought processes about yourself that change. Um, When I did start working with Layla, um, she had to work through a lot of that with me because I am a fluctuator. Like even now in a weight loss, I'm currently doing, as you know, another weight loss round with you guys and doing another tone up round and I fluctuate like crazy. Um, in the beginning, now that I have the tools to deal with that, it's a little bit, you know, going back around the second time, I kind of feel like I'm sailing a sea that I've already sailed. And so I'm like, Mm. I I remember these landmarks. I know how to do this a little bit more, but that. that first time around, it was scary, you know, because I'm like putting all my trust in this coach and my numbers would fluctuate. And I would like call her on these meetings and be like, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Like she would have to break down a lot of those barriers. And some of the ways she did that, that stuck for me, one was by using knowledge against my fear. Um, she would educate me on reasons why my weight could have gone up before starting tandem. I had no idea about all the different reasons women's weight can fluctuate. Um, and of course I'm, you know, I'm in the medical profession. So I, you know, I would, she would tell me something. I would like go and look it up and be like, is she right? Like, and you know, it was all research back. It was all evidence-based. And I was like, no, she's right. Like I can believe this, like this is correct. Um, and so she would use a significant amount of knowledge about carbs, water solubility, like things that you don't even think about when you step on that scale as to why it could be fluctuating. And then instead of just stopping there, she would say, let's find another way to measure your progress. Because I don't think that, you know, you're seeing your whole journey here. Like, I don't think you're seeing all the work you've done. So we would look at measurements. We would look at my strength progression and my weightlifting. And every week there would be something that I missed in, there was a win every week that I missed that she would catch. And she would use those to really help me combat um, how much worth I put into the scale until finally over time. And I mean, it took time to do that consistently to where I didn't trust, not that I didn't trust the scale. I do trust the scale, but I didn't trust it to tell the truth about how hard I was working all the time. Uh, I see. And um, that was one of the biggest things that I took away from particularly with Layla, like Hannah, um, definitely I took a lot away, but with Layla particularly, like she was very good at combating um, my negative thought processes with facts instead of just being like, they're there, it'll be better. Like, you know, <laughs> it's going to be okay. Like she didn't do that. She sat down, worked through the details and showed me like through evidence, you know, where I was succeeding and where may need some work. And it was, it was like, enlightening for me. So, um, that was a huge tool that I gained, um, throughout that process. That's amazing. So it sounds like, you know, coach Lee did a great job with shining light on other markers of success outside of the scale, which allowed you to see your improvements and your progress 
uh, that just wasn't shown by that number on the scale. And, and, and is, is that how you maybe worked from putting less emphasis on, on the scale and the number? Or what would you say really kind of pulled you away from that? Um, so definitely seeing um, over time, my progress photos would definitely change things because mm -hmm. my weight would not necessarily always match those. Um, on weigh-in day, I would see the scale and be like, oh, I'm kind of bummed. I thought I would lose more than I did. But then we would compare you know, from four weeks to four weeks. And I was like, wow, like I see all these changes. So I think it's really important too, especially women that are thinking about doing tandem or are, are doing tandem. If you're doing any type of recomp, like that is so important to keep in mind um, that recomp is going to make the scale move in many different ways. So that's super important to keep in mind. It was super important for me to keep in mind. Um, I think that eventually it really was week by week being consistent despite the scale even though like if it wasn't going the way I wanted to in in spite of it I would keep going um with with my coach's help mm -hmm. and that is actually what I would say over time mm -hmm. allowed me not to rely mm -hmm. on the scale so much because if the scale went up I still did my workout I still tried to stick to the macros and at the end of the day, I still got into bed and slowly over time, that habit of relying on the scale does change because your thought process has to change because you are developing a new habit. And eventually you do start to take more pride in like the work you put into your day and um, how you set your intentions that day. And did you follow through on those intentions? And when you say yes, consistently every day, when you get back into bed and you're like, no, I did. I consistently hit those intentions through my day with this coaching. The scale matters, but just not as much anymore. It just mm -hmm. doesn't. You know, I love how you said be consistent, even the times when things aren't going your way, that that's when like true success happens over time. And I, yeah. I talk to a lot of women and you know, we've worked with a lot of women too. And the biggest thing we see is when, you know, when life hits us or we're not able to like, do something correct for one day or two days, you know, we see the scale go up and it just feels like, you know, that all is, is wrong. Yeah. And, and really it's, it's really not that big a deal because it's really hard to mess up all this progress you've made over just a couple of days and, and not wanting to give up and you know, keep pushing forward despite what the scale says is I think, you know, a big, I mean, a huge reason why you achieved the success you did. And I can understand how that shaped your mentality to know that, hey, the scale is just one of the many tools that we use and that should be used for markers of uh, markers of progress, Yeah, especially with the progress photos too. Those are so very important. And we get very similar reactions to other women too. And they may see the scale move two, three pounds in a month, but when they see the side by sides, like, whoa, like that is a big, big difference. Uh, physically, yeah. it just can't be shown on the scale. Yeah. I'm, I was thinking about like, you know, what you said today um, or earlier today, I was thinking about, you know, we were going to discuss this stuff and I went to the mall um, and we went past a Mexican restaurant and we went in and, you know, this is just one example. And I was thinking about it today because I was like, I really want to make sure I touch base on this because I think this is something that a lot of people run into. One of the biggest successes for me um, after tandem was like what happened today. Today I set my intentions about going, you know, I'm gonna stick to my macros, I'm gonna do this. I went into a Mexican restaurant and I ate like 20, you know, fried chips and guacamole and they were delicious. They were so good. And a year ago I would have punished myself for that. I would have been really upset with myself walking out of that restaurant. I would have been like, you failed. You know, you did not hit your goals. You were not supposed to eat those. Those are bad foods. Bad foods, good foods was a whole thing. Like, um, I would have felt really down for the rest of the day walking out of that Mexican restaurant, knowing that I'd eaten these taco chips and guacamole that I was not supposed to have. Today, I walked out of the restaurant and I thought about, you know, I was like, it's so odd that like, I'm going to be talking to Garrett later about this, because this is a perfect example of a tool that I took away from tandem that despite joining, you know, joining again for another tone up, not joining again, whether I go and move off to another country, I will have this, this skill forever. And it was the ability to give myself some grace and know mm, yes. that those taco chips didn't ruin all my progress this week. Um, wow, yes. 
that was, that's the biggest thing for me. Like that was such an invaluable, um, mindset to be able to have, because I was never able to get to that point Mm -hmm. in my mindset and in my life before, before, you know, starting with Tandem and with coach Layla. So I really want to drive that home for anybody that is listening to this. Like if you're that type of person that goes out to eat and doesn't eat what you're supposed to eat that day, or you feel like you failed and then you feel like your whole night is going to be ruined or you are going to feel terrible about yourself for the rest of the day. Please know that your life does not have to be that way. Like there are skills that you can develop with help um, through coaching that it does not have to be that way. Um, I came home and I adjusted my macros and I'm chilling. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm going to use those carbs tomorrow when I deadlift. Like it's not, it's a whole different mindset. So that is so incredible. And in that last part, you said you came home and you adjusted your macros. I, I'm curious. And I'm sure that those listening are curious too. What does that mean when you said that you just adjusted your macros? So I came home and I looked at the damage done. So I plugged it in. Um, and saw that I definitely went over fat, but I had way more carbs to spare still because I had gone really, really light on carbs for breakfast. So I was able to adjust that and say, okay, you know, dinner plans can change. I made a quick salad, measured out my dressing, added some lean salmon. And, you know, did I go over in fat? Yes. Did I stand under my carbs? Yes. More importantly, am I still in a deficit? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that, type of skill set. You know, I remember that conversation with you that first day, it was nothing. I, I was not familiar with any of this. I didn't have that type of control because I didn't have that type of knowledge and I didn't have those skills developed over time with teaching to be able to take control of a situation like that. It would have just wrecked me. And I probably would have ended up binging more, um, when I got home because I would have felt defeated. Um, and instead I'm still in a deficit. So it's just Wonderful. something I really wanted to, I mean, I just wanted to touch base on it really quick. That's awesome. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize that you went through that today. So thank you for yeah. sharing that with me. Yeah, no problem. And you had like a double whammy too. Like today you got home and you had some, some medicine or something that had some sodium. Yes, I did. Yes. It's a tough day. Yeah. I took way too much sodium in a supplement. So I know my, my sodium is going to be off the chart tomorrow. It's another reason that you can gain weight, um, water weight. So, um, normally I would, yeah, I would be like losing it right now, but no, um, I, I really, and I, and I do sounds corny, but I do have, um, tandem to thank for that because I developed those skills and the ability to maintain that sort of control through the coaching I received. And, you know, this next round on, in which you're going throughout the Tone Up VIP program, your way, I mean, you're just starting off lightning fast. The past few days, you've been hitting, like, new low weigh-ins every single week. I don't believe you had, um, and there's definitely nothing against, like, um, no coaching process. There's no difference in coaching, but yeah. difference in mindset as you approach your plan. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, my first round of coaching, actually, with Layla, I did drop four pounds the first week. <laughs> okay. Because, like, this is a thing for me. That's why, like, I'm kind of a little more calm about it this time around. I'm like, yeah, I dropped three pounds. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I know <laughs> what I do. Like, um, I think a lot of women go through that when they first lose weight, right? They go hard and fast into that first week. And they set their intentions. And their steam is still full ahead. And they're full of energy and ready to conquer it. They haven't hit any bumps yet. So they see that first weight drop and, um, the first time around, yeah, I, um, it was a lot more difficult because I, I kind of akin it to sailing a ship at sea. Um, you're kind of sailing and you don't know what you're going to find on this journey. You don't know what's on the horizon. You just are literally being guided by your coach and you're sailing ahead, full steam ahead. You have no idea like where this is going, you know? Um, this time around, I do feel like a little bit more prepared for mm-hmm. some of the islands that, that you run into on this journey, like um, a little bit of stagnation and fluctuations. And I'm kind of a little bit more, I would call it a little more seasoned um, mm-hmm. in the mindset that you go through when you do a tone up or a cut, you know, um, yeah. and um, being in a caloric deficit, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, this time around, it, it does feel uh, like I do have a little bit more control over myself and over the situation. Um, that first time around, though, 
was absolutely necessary or I wouldn't have been able to do it this calmly. Definitely not. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just love that analogy you just told us about being like a sailor on a ship at sea. And like, you know, and even as Shalom said, like, you know, throughout any fat loss phase, whether you're on your own or with a coach, like we have to look out for those islands. So it's those uh, points of plateau or fluctuations, yeah. which are completely normal. Like you happen. are going to hit them, whether you want to or not, they <laughs> exist in the sea and you are going to sail past them. Like you don't have, that's not a choice in any person's weight loss journey. Yes. Um, so it's just important, even if you're by yourself to have the skills to navigate through those because that's so good. You have to get through those in order to get to where you're going. Um, it's just a part of the journey. And it's kind of like, you know, the difference is how you navigate through those. Do you let it shipwreck you on an island for a few days or right. to make you like back pedal because the wind came back because you, right. uh, it's a, like you fell or do you use that as like, Hey, this is where I'm at my point, my journey. And, and plateau is, is I, I tell clients uh, and members that plateaus are actually a good thing to hit uh, because plateaus are a body's natural survival uh, situation in which it says, Hey, we notice there's a calorie deficit happening. There's a scarcity of food and we want to help you stay alive. And so what it does, it literally, your body literally burns, releases uh, less energy throughout the day to help you stay alive. Right. Uh, and that's a more severe example, but hitting plateaus means that you're on, a, on the right progress. Right. It's all how to navigate through those successfully. And, and like you've done, Shalom, like you've done amazing doing that. Thank you. Well, I definitely had help. So, <laughs> um, but yes, that I could not agree more with that. Um, it is always a journey. Um, but I think, you know, looking back now, um, and even going through it again, um, the journey, actually you get so much out of the journey that you, that you weren't expecting. You, you start this because the goal is to lose weight or change the, what you don't like about your body or change the way you, um, feel about how you look in the mirror, all these different reasons to lose weight. Right. But the, the things that you don't expect, or you have no idea that you're going to collect or develop along the way on the journey, almost in retrospect, are worth just as much or more than losing the weight. Um, so it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> I, I've learned so much about this podcast. I mean, especially understanding, I love the analogy, like I said, and really it was like, sometimes as a coach, like I take these little things for granted, like the little strategies or the mindset techniques, techniques we teach. I feel like, you know, everyone gets it or, you know, people already do that. So they're not that powerful, but man, I just hearing you talk, uh, Shalom has, has brought a, a new breath of fresh air thinking that, Hey, like we need to be talking more about this. And yeah. I'm excited because, you know, we're launching a new program starting on Monday. And one of the pieces that we're going to put in this program is on mindset and coaching more on mindset into our, our new client only Facebook group. So definitely want to want to, and we may, we may even have to have you lead a, a, a session or two uh, because you are definitely an expert in this area after sailing through the, the rough waters you have for so many years. And now you're smooth sailing. And, and as you know, there will be some bumpy things here and there, but you just coast right on through and you, you stay on track no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. If there was one or like one or two or, three piece of advice you can leave our listeners with today. Say it's a woman who is struggling with stress eating or even uncontrollable cravings. What, what advice would you give them to help them maybe make that one step towards getting to a better spot psychologically or mentally with their progress? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, the first step is to like definitely one of one of the things that helped me was to be open about it. Um, if you try to fix it yourself, I think, or you try to pretend like that's not what's actually happening, I think it just kind of further perpetuates the cycle. So I think it's important to be open about it either with yourself or with your coach. If you're doing a coaching program, like it's very important. Um, I was very open with Layla about when I was having these cravings and when it was, you know, happening and, and almost like what was perpetuating it, like, Hey, this is a high stress time for me. So I know that this may be coming. If you're somebody that does struggle with cravings like that, you know, kind of, like I said, looking ahead, um, as a long game, know your habits, know that you tend to lean that way. And so when you see, um, that something stressful is coming your way, um, I think that it's really important to set intention, um, mm. and know that this is something you struggle with. So maybe set, set your macros for that day or, or set your, um, 
amount of food for that day, however you're doing it. Um, set your intentions on giving yourself a little bit of room to eat what you need to eat um, or that you know you're going to eat um, instead of guiltily binging it. Give yourself some room for it um, because it's, it's okay. Um, I think another thing that I would say is um, if you are somebody that struggles with that, that there is a there is a different mindset that you are able to get into. It is possible. Mm. You, you most likely will need help. Um, I, you know, you may be able to do it alone. I wasn't. I needed. I needed coaching. I needed help. Um, but if you are somebody that's like doing coaching, um, you have to remember that eventually all mindsets change um, through consistency with changing your habits. So eventually it won't be something you have to do anymore. Eventually it will be your form of self-care. Um, wow. You know, the way that you look at self-care and the way that you, the things that you enjoy will actually change. Um, uh, you know, give yourself rest. Definitely. Um, you need to re remember how important it is to rest because a lot of the times when I was doing craving and binging was when I was just mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted. Um, and I wasn't allowing myself to rest. Um, that was one of the biggest things I took away from tandem actually was learning how to take a rest day. Um, it was not something I was used to, but now I always take two rest days. That's just how many I determined I needed. And I always take them. Um, and it helps. Um, I think the last thing I would probably say as far as that goes is you have to remember in the end that this is a long game. Um, this is not, you know, your life is not like a score on a report card. That's so um, good. Yes. It's so important to give yourself grace in these moments because you still wake up with you tomorrow. So you need to be graceful and be kind to you. Um, my dog is like whining. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but these are lifelong habits that you're trying to instill. So it's not going to happen overnight. Um so it's really important to be gentle with yourself and give yourself grace in this process. As long as you keep trying, um, you're still, you're still making progress. So. That, that was just incredibly valuable. So thank, thank you, you so much for sharing that. I mean, I'm going to go back and rewatch this episode myself <laughs> once you get it published. So that was, I just loved everything you said, the, especially the advice that you've given um, something that I, I definitely go back and rewind, watch again. Um, yeah you know, tons of great stuff there. And I just want to say thank you so much for yeah, absolutely. Being to share your story to, uh, and just be so vulnerable as you were to say, Hey, I, I struggled. And even, even like, again, I'm there, I was there as well. And you know, it's not easy and everyone faces this to some degree. And if you don't, that's awesome. Keep going. The yeah. If you don't go for you. <laughs> yeah, this is maybe not your episode, but again, I just want to say thank you so much. Shalom. You're amazing. Yeah, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I'll let you know as soon as this episode is uh, live on the major po podcast platform. But um, everyone, if you have any questions, please drop them below. And um, we'll be back again next Thursday at 7 p.m. for a brand new episode. So we catch you guys soon. And uh, thank you again, Shalom, for, for joining me this evening. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.